Hello everybody, welcome to Planet FPL, the world where everything revolves around Fantasy Premier League. My name's Such. And my name is James. Tuesday is People's Poll Day. For the regular listeners, they'll know that we put a bunch of topics out and let the people decide what we will to talk about on the show. What were their choices, James? What one? Can't remember. Um, no. There was it was all to do with money and there were bribery. F- there, were, there were three choices. Um, and I, the, other, the two losers I'd like to come back to, actually. Um, CSK Sofia are first and second in Bulgaria currently. Go and look it up on Sofa Score or Footmob or something. There's a, there's a very interesting backstory behind that that I wanted to share. Um, the nineties bung scandal was another option. Uh, Bruce Grobelar, Hans Sagers, George Graham. There was a lot going on in the mid nineties with uh, bungs, which I was asked yesterday. What's a bung, Such? Uh Brown. Paper bag <laughs> with money in it. <laughs> with 50 pound notes, yeah. basically. Um, but neither of those won the poll vote. The winner of the People's Poll this week is how and why Set Blatter and Michelle Platini were cleared of corruption. Yep. Well, they were cleared in that one specific uh, thing that they were charged with. So it doesn't mean they are not corrupt. Um, but there was something that they were accused <laughs> I of. That you uh, went there already. <laughs> yeah, it doesn't mean they weren't corrupt. But the Sepp Blatter said it himself almost kind of in his broken English a little bit. His English is good, but I think he was trying to um, not be too committing on what he was saying. These I'm, two, I'm not innocent in my life, but in this case, I'm innocent. Is yeah, that yeah, what you're exactly to? that, right? It's like, well, <laughs> what are you talking about? He's like, I'm not here to represent, to, to talk about FIFA. I'm talking about myself. So what are you saying? That FIFA's corrupt, but you're not? So I don't understand. But, but you it, ran FIFA for how long? No, a long time. Well, yeah. 17 years in the end, wasn't it? I think, give a or long, take. Too long, put it that um, way. So what, what, this, this case um, being tried in Switzerland, um, it's been a little while since uh, they were charged and what have you. It seems very um, basic in the case, considering some of the uh, corruption stuff that's happened to do with FIFA in the last seven or eight years, this particular case is quite basic. So define it if you can for us. Well, Platini, Blatter was in charge of FIFA. Yep. And he hired Platini as a technical advisor or some shit like that. <clears throat> Gave him a job. And this is in 1998. So I don't think football was particularly poor back then. Anyway, for whatever reason, um, it was agreed that Platini would work for FIFA for a couple of years in this technical advisor role. Blatter gave Platini the job. Cool. And there was a limit on how much money FIFA were able to pay him a year. I was it 300,000 euros or 100,000? Well, FIFA adopting their own FFP <coughs> for themselves no, they, before there was Apparently, they didn't have enough money to pay him anymore. So, they paid him a certain Should salary. Should you believe that? Just straight away. Just I'm just jumping. trying to think, 98, France night was the World Cup. Like, well, yeah. Football had money then. And yes. FIFA's uh, amongst one of the richest organisations in the world. I think off the back of USA 94 and yeah. the World Cup in France, yeah. It was coming. So, um, and they'd, they'd obviously given the tournament to South Korea and Japan yeah, for 2002. Yeah, yeah. Years later, fast forward, and uh, Michel Platini received a payment for 2 million francs. Let's call it 1.8 million euros. Couple, just under a couple, 1.7 million pounds, whatever. Probably a couple of million dollars. Somewhere in the region, a couple of million. And everyone's like, oh, why has he received this payment from FIFA? Blatter's still in charge of FIFA. And um, so it was investigated and then they were both charged with corruption as this is like dodgy, should be taking money out. The argument they made was that back then in 1998, we agreed that his salary would be 1 million a year, but we didn't have the money to pay him 1 million. We only paid him like 100,000 a year. And so now, like... 15, 17 years later. So this was in like 2012. They that paid, was the payment they made, paid, yeah. Uh, 15 Platini. years later. Oh, by the way, that 2 million we owe you from back then, you can have it now. At which point during like a 13, 13 14 year period, exactly. do you go, I want my 2 million pounds? So the problem with this whole case is that nothing is documented or written down. So like, there's no contract. It was a verbal agreement, right? Yeah, there's because no contract. Because it was done loosely. It's not in his contract yeah. of uh, services or employment or none of that. And um, 
the amount is not written down anywhere, and the only evidence they have is a gentleman's verbal agreement. Just like Roberto Mancini consultancy job exactly. he did in the UAE. <laughs> well, is it a bit like that? I mean, there might be paperwork for that. So they went to the court um, arguing the case. The, the obviously the uh, prosecutors didn't believe them when they said that we had a verbal agreement or that that verbal agreement was strong enough to be a defence. But the judge thought otherwise and said, okay, fine, the verbal agreement is justification. How does that hold up? Fuck knows. (laughs) No, legitimately, how does a verbal agreement hold up in court? Well, there's a difference between uh, you and you saying that I verbally agreed to give you 10 grand and me saying I didn't to us both verbally saying, yeah, fine, I agreed to give you 10 grand. Just remember, I owe you a tenner. What for? Podcast last Monday. Bet you a tenner at the start, you wouldn't sneeze and you didn't. Oh, oh don't worry about that. Uh, it's just 17 years from now, um, you can give me 10 million. It's fine. <laughs> <laughs> the, the verbal agreement, is it? Yeah, unfortunately, this is all documented now. But yeah, there's a difference between you and me disagreeing about what we said verbally, whereas these two are both backing each other up, right? So they're yeah, both, both saying, "Of course they would." Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so Why you're like, okay, they? but if the, if the judge, if, if one's saying, "Well, he agreed to pay me two million," the other saying, "I agreed to pay him two million," what's the judge supposed to say? They're both backing each other up. So the judge could say, "Right, okay, there's a case that you haven't done, uh, you haven't pro- followed on, proper no, 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 governance that's, and stuff." That's absurd. So you've got person that they've been done on corruption charges. Because payment has been made from person A to person B. From FIFA to Platini. The right. money came well, from FIFA, not from Blatter. So why is Blatter involved? Because Blatter was president of FIFA at right. the time and said, make this payment. So, okay, so effectively, Blatter pressed the nuclear button on his payment, if you will. Yeah. Paid Platini. Of course. It's a dodgy payment from one person to another person, allegedly. Of course they're going to back up and corroborate each other's story. Yeah, yeah. Yep. It's not to anybody's benefit to for unless Platini was going. Actually, it should have been three point five million or whatever. No, and at that point, then it's a dis- dispute. But no, they've they've covered each other's back, and I don't see what I, the, the judge might argue the case that he doesn't believe them, but they're backing each other up. So that's why they've both been cleared of corruption in this case, and Platini's got his money, and off we go. Why are so many sports bodies in Switzerland uh, tax? I'd assume tax. I mean, they're all filthy rich, right? How much money do FIFA have in the bank? It's going to be in excess of a billion. I, I mean, I didn't in excess research of a, it. a billion, James, that the FIFA have they've in got the an, bank. They've got an absurd amount of money. Yeah, cash as well. I, I just can't get my head around. I think most people were the same. When the news broke back in July that they'd been cleared, I think most people were like, oh, how, why? There was there, there, there's a lot of questions around it. Firstly... Is that because we don't understand is it is it because we have an assumption that they're corrupt I, they are I, they lots, are lots of fifa and what obviously what happened with okay. the fbi and conobol and conica calf Ex- so th- here are a number of like things that don't quite add up oh go right? on if you're platini and uh set blatter says look i'll give you the money but i'll give it to you you if i said that to you you'd want it in writing mate <laughs> Absolutely. So why Platini's accepted it when Blatter could easily have been voted out of pres out of uh, the role of president, and then what? He's going to have to go back to the new president, it's like whoever it might now, be, spending the money that Barcelona <laughs> don't have because someone else is going to pick up the pieces. Well, you you want it in writing, right? Secondly, market rate. The judge agreed that the market rate for the role of technical advisor and the agreed salary of a million a year was not beyond. What was market rate? Uh, I've got that, and I don't disagree with that. Really? Yeah, well, yeah. A million I, a year. I, I, I don't know. To be a technical advisor. I mentioned FIFA Roberto Mancini. Yeah, yeah. No, I get it. It's a long time ago. But to be fair, even I, I listened to a bit of Kieran Maguire on the price of football. He fucking knows his onions inside that. Even he said, he said, it's it's disputable, but it's not beyond the realms it's not of... ridiculous, but it's a hell of a lot of money to... For back the then, time. yes. Yeah. And then to defer it. Um, so... Yeah, I think those those kind of things make you think, well, okay. And then that 15-year period passes, 14 years, whatever it is, and then suddenly the money gets paid. Well, then you have to question 
why was it paid that at that point particularly or what was happening in and around that time that might have been important for suddenly Platini to get that money and uh, understand that he's now in charge of UEFA which is all the European football federations are you saying it was paid around about the time that FIFA were awarding World Cups to Russia and Qatar no, I'm saying it's just before Blatter was up for election again and might have had a competitor in Mohammed bin al Haman wanting to run for president of FIFA. So this was the guy that um, I think when they when they went for the presidency, Blatter needed a certain amount of majority to retain being Correct. president of FIFA. Correct. In the first round of voting, he didn't get enough. There was no. a, there was a second round of voting, but before the second round of voting, your man pulled out. Mm-hmm. What's his name, sorry? Mohammed Al bin Haman. That's your guy. Why did but, he pull out? Do we know? Uh no, I don't. But did he get did he get a brown envelope? Did he get is, a bung? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so um the flow of money within FIFA and the football federations is very dodgy. What's even better about very that? Very dodgy. Blatter Blatter then having won the presidency resigned within a week. Well, he was forced, kicked out, right, because of this situation with Platini, who was also, at the time, they were both banned from football for eight years. It was reduced later. To six. Um, But they're not going to, I don't know. What's Black going to do at 86? Um, So the flow of money, um, a lot of this stems from investigations that were happening in America with the FBI um, in Cotton Bowl. And CONCACAF, so North America, Mexico. It's South America, uh, North America's UEFA. The Caribbean and all that kind of stuff. The football federations in that region yeah. were under investigation from the FBI at the time. And this this led to a, a number of spin-off investigations. And there is, obviously, anyone can, can go to, to Google and do their research and uh, look into it. But because a lot of these investigations were done by the likes of the FBI and so on, a lot of these cases become public. So it's not speculation and hearsay this is shit that they've investigated and made public so it's legit stuff and when you look at the flow of money it makes you feel like they all were in on it together yes it was basically an opportunity for them all to get rich off the football federation you have to say allegedly at the end of every Uh, sentence well i mean some of these people have been charged right and uh were arrested and so on so i don't think necessarily you have to be that uh, covert like it makes what's happened in ireland probably look small fry but there are a lot of a lot of examples of like um and the types of things that people things people uh, money was flowing into individual bank accounts for is like rights of tournaments so in 2010 uh the uh, 20, 2008 sorry 10 million dollars was paid to the caribbean football federation Concacaf. From, Concacaf, from South Africa in 2008. And that, <coughs> excuse me, $10 million somehow... South Africa were obviously hosted in 2010, 2010, but would have already had the tournament won. Sure, but it could be a case of vote for us and in, and a bit further down the line, mate, we'll what, scratch like your back. 13 years later. So uh, that money was, uh, was paid to help football in the Caribbean was the kind of, we're going to give you some money to help your grassroots football, mate. But somehow, I think $1.3 million ended up in Jack paying off Jack Warner's personal loans and credit cards. He's the best one of the lot, isn't he, Jack oh, Warner? He's fucking brilliant. <laughs> there was like, uh, Wikipedia, there was like $4.8 million ended up in some Trinidad and Tobago <laughs> supermarket chain. No way. No, I don't fucking get it. Um, and then there's there's all sorts of um, more local tournaments, um, like the, the qualifiers for the World Cup and that kind of thing, where hosting rights of those, there's been bribery involved in those. Uh, there was alleged, um, there's marketing and, and uh, merchandise related bribery charges. Uh, uh, apparently, Nike paid $40 million uh, in a bribe to be Brazil's official equipment and kit why, sponsor. Why bribe? Well, it's, 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 those, those rights are awarded um, by the... That's just sponsorship, isn't it? By the foot... No, if I pay you as a person, oh, that's see. a bribe, right? So they didn't go so, straight to the Brazilian no, no, football... No. They would have paid them money as well. Okay. Don't get me wrong, but they would have paid someone 40 million on the side 
on top of that. Right. Like they're gonna make fuck loads from being Brazil's kit sponsors, right? Yeah. I just remember the, in the late nineties and early two thousand. Well, it was the two thousands. Really, like, Jogger the, Bonita and all the, that. The stuff. ads with the uh, kicking the ball in, around in the airport. It's the best ad yeah. ever, isn't it? They they were great, mate. But um, how much money were they have made made of being Brazil's? Kit sponsors and that, and oh, yeah. then they had Ronaldinho and Ronaldo and all those boys, Ronaldo and whatever else at the time. Um, so yeah, that all of that kind of stuff, but not just like that's one example of. There's a lot of marketing, image rights, merchandising rights that they have been awarded to various companies. Um, the total that they were looking at, the FBI were looking at, was about 150 million dollars <laughs> worth of bungs and bribes and payments. And when you start looking into it, this is all you have to remember. This is all under Blatter, right? Yes, it's under. I'm not saying it's him. It's under. Uh, yeah, yeah. yeah Confederation is yeah, yeah, under yeah, his. Yeah. yeah, everybody had their hand in the till a little bit, is what it looks like in certain areas. Everybody was kind of, I'll pay you a bit of this and a bit of consultancy here and a bit of money here and a bit of money there, and that, that no smoke without fire, is my opinion. I, to I, be honest I remember with you. we played a game in Trinidad, England. I can't remember the year, um, but it was it was the, it wasn't even to do with a World Cup bid. It was like to it was to help get Warner's vote for a, a different European nation or something. It was re- really weird. It was to get all that group of Concacaf on side for a European vote for something. I think it might have even been to do with Full Blatter and that going up against um, your man. But it was well before that. It was uh, Stephen Warnock played for England. I remember there was a whole fuss about it. it was, I'm sure it was only ever cap for England. And then FIFA said they wouldn't recognise the game and he wasn't going to get the cap, but he did get his cap. Um, but yeah, there was weird stuff going on mm. at the time. The, the the flow of money is crazy. Um, and when you when you uncover where these these are not small sums of money that are being paid to people and individuals. So um, yeah, very very dodgy. Was Platini done wrong here? Did Platini accept the money? So the, the thought at the time was that he had influence over all the heads of all of the European Football Federation. So he would have said, like, okay, as a collective Europe, we're going to vote for Qatar to get the World Cup, Russia to get the World Cup, or what have you. I think it, and so it, if it he appears, accepted he the he was money... going to be Blatter's hair, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think this is the, the plan. I think uh, if he accepted the money for that reason which we can't prove, then, of course, yeah, he's done wrong. He's taken money out of FIFA um, to as a bribe. If that was money that was due to him for his job back then, then technically, no, he hasn't done anything wrong. But it's just a bit suspicious. The circumstances are just all a bit shady. So what happens now? Nothing. It's done now. It's end of case, right? So... That specific case is done. So what else is there to answer to? Nothing. They, they don't have any other charges hanging over. So when um, the, F- the FIFA offices and all that got raided back in like 2015, was was this was this all that they had on Blatter? On Blatter, yeah. A lot of the other stuff that they had was to do with the CONCACAF and yeah. CONBOL and all that kind of stuff, South Africa and various other countries as well. But Blatter, they've only come up w- with this. So he's exonerated, he's not corrupt... In any way, by law, no, they haven't found anything they can charge him with. Doesn't mean he's not corrupt because he had a verbal he's covered fucking his agreement. Tracks well, or um, there's paper trails for stuff, but it's just. I read that in the trial, he was he did a speech um, because of his age. He's like 86. He didn't have to go and stand at the front. He was just allowed to sit in his chair and do it. But I read in the Athletic that it, 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 during the trial where he spoke, um, he was all saying like he'd been a brilliant citizen for Switzerland and all this and. It's going back to what I said about... He loves himself, man. Well, I, I suppose people of his power do, yeah. I don't suppose Michelle Platini doesn't. He is the footballing equivalent of Donald Trump. <laughs> Teflon. <Wow. laughs> Teflon. And the thing is, like, Trump's done all sorts of dodgy shit in America, right? But getting a, a lot of it to stick is very hard when people have that much money and power. It's difficult. But yeah, I would call him uh, football's uh, equivalent of Donald Trump. It feels like it was such a big story... That ended with such a yeah anti as as so many of these uh, stories do when you're talking about people in places of power or who have large amounts of wealth, James. Sadly, so do you think they could pursue anything back at FIFA now because of the ban no. they had and stuff? So that ban that Blatter had, so 
Blatter got banned in 2015 for eight years, reduced to six years. That period's obviously now gone. Correct. And obviously, he's only now been exonerated. So, does he have any rights to take FIFA to court? No, because... Um, no, I don't think so. It, whilst he was under investigation, he was charged. Sure, but uh, he was charged with a crime at the time. So, but he's been proven not to have done the crime. Yeah, I would need to look into uh, look into a bit more, but I don't think he can. And I know Woody. I think it's done now for him. It's like just move on. I ain't gonna want to get back involved in football. Do we think FIFA is in a better place without him. Well, uh, Infantino is in charge now. He was uh, Platini's kind of number two at UEFA previously, right? Yeah. No, I don't think so. Um, Why not? Everyone's always got their hand. Oh, we're in a better place. Don't get me wrong. Is it now clean? Probably not. He speaks about new FIFA. He often, when he does his we does his seminars and these speeches and stuff, he talks about new FIFA and and moving away from old FIFA, which is like him kind of cutting his ties from. Yeah, and I think he probably does mean basically. well. But yeah, I don't mind him, Gianni Infantino, um, okay. and I don't mind Seferin, who's doing UEFA at the moment. I don't think these people are ever overly there to be liked. No. Um, I just wanted to do the right thing for, for football, that it's fair and it's it's open and it's transparent and we can see what's happening. And I feel like that's definitely more the case now, but I don't know if that's also because our understanding and what we learn and the freedom of information is so much greater than it was even, say, 10 sure. years ago with, with social media and stuff for now. For sure, but then you look at FFP and things like that and they're still murky, still very murky. But then it's gone so far now where you've got lots of club power, haven't you? And Loads. Money uh, talks always. Money talks. Um, that's it, I think. Other than there was a football match last night. Forest Villa 1-1. One, did, one. did you watch it? No. Well, I've watched the last four Aston Villa games, all of them, in their entirety. And the first one, they drew with Manchester City. And they didn't play too badly. Yeah. Um, I think City took their foot off the pedal. And Leon Bailey scored a really good goal and actually gave City a couple of scary moments after a period where City had looked like they were going to stroll to victory and got themselves a very creditable point. Since then, they haven't lost. They've drawn two, one the other, um, and I've wanted to kill myself watching all three of these games. And the funniest thing is, um, I said this to Matt Samuel who was pre-recording COTC earlier, I said, I think the, the, the one last night was the best of the three. <laughs> Um, Villa fans have turned you could hear that in your way in last night yeah. um, and I tweeted and it wasn't to dig out Villa uh, at all or dig out Villa fans it was it was my sense of what I was seeing from them that they all want Gerard gone and nobody no Villa fan has come back to me and said this is incorrect I want him to stay they'd, they'd all sack him right now they're sick of what they're watching they've got the players they haven't lost in four who the last team to beat them? Arsenal. Oh, okay. I thought so, it no, it wasn't. <laughs> Get back in your box. <laughs> oh, mate. Um, okay, I don't blame them. They've got the players. This is frustrating when you've got when you've got the squad. This is what it is. It's not. And, and listen, by the way, when we said haven't lost in four, it's three draws and. And a one nil win against Southampton. It's nothing to get overly excited about. It's the same as two wins and two defeats. In effect, um, it's it's what Villa are watching with what they've got because what I've said a number of times is we do have good footballers mm. got enough attacking I finished with Ings, Watkins and Archer all on the pitch last night Coutinho wasn't good again when Diaz a good player could have missing Bailey the midfield's still basically with Kamara now injured the same midfield that, that Dean Smith had actually defensively they're not too bad when you look at their record their underlying numbers are quite good as well no one's battering them but I think Villa fans have this sense that they've had these these three games. Southampton was a dre- was the worst of the lot, was dreadful. Leeds became attritional, as I said to you. Um, and then last night, Forrest there to be beat. Leeds, they, they were up against 10 men for a bit as well. Well, exactly. And they did, didn't do nothing, or not, uh, nowhere mm. near enough. I was very critical of them on, on the podcast last Monday. And I think you'd only be critical of them last night because watching it, you never thought they were going to score in that second half. They're so narrow in everything they do. Um, which is surprising when we have, they do have a player like Bailey, admittedly wasn't available last night. But it, it just everything they do is so narrow and condensed. 
that the fullbacks have got to get massively high. And if they don't, the structure just breaks down. Um, I, I don't think they'll change, but I think it might get to the point a little bit like what, what Daniel Levy was watching with, with Mourinho when we, we drew at Everton and it, it was like, even though we drew 2-2, it was like, this is absolutely terrible. It's like, I can't watch no more of this. And you see the Villa guys in the stands last night, I'm not happy with what they're watching. Yes, they're not going to back in with more money in January, I don't think. They scored more than one goal in any... When's the last time they scored more than one goal? One against Southampton, one yesterday, one against Villa. Uh, beat Everton 2-1, game with two. And every other game's one one goal or less. Yeah, but then, like I said, to be fair, they're not conceding many either. So I think you can turn that on its head and do it the other way. Because they lost, obviously, 2 nil at Bournemouth opening day. Lost 2-1 at Arsenal. Uh, game week three is escaping. They lost... Uh, Lose to Palace? Yes, they lost to Palace. Conceded a couple. But their defensive numbers are, are fine. Their defensive numbers are like bang on mid-table, which I think is where I'd expect Villa to finish with what they have in terms of the quality of the squad. I think beyond ninth is probably quite tough at the moment, but I think top half is a reasonable expectation for Villa fans. And despite, what, not losing in four, they're sitting there like 16th looking over their shoulder with Chelsea to come this weekend. And I think that's what it might need is the bad defeat, and then it will really change the psyche from the owner's perspective. Because so I think if Chelsea were to go there and win well on Sunday, he's going to turn quite nasty at Villa Park. And if I feel like there's loads of this at the moment, where it feels like there's an underlying bubbles of certain fan bases at various different clubs are ready to lose the plot at the moment. Like Rogers the other week with Forest, okay, beat Forest, everything's fine, forget about it get beat by Bournemouth. They go into this weekend against Palace, same situation again, don't they? Yeah. Where it could turn really suddenly. For Forest, decent point under the circumstances because they've been woeful recently. You see the, uh, the Dean Henderson stat, you must have seen it because no. everybody under the Suns tweeted it. Seven games in a row is considered uh, from a shot outside the box. Oh, wow. I don't think it's good enough, you know. Interesting. I don't. I, He's I, made some good saves. I, I mean, think he was good against I us. Think, he made a few good I saves. I think the Ashley Young goal last night, I think most goalkeepers saved that. He seems so slow to get down. Um, so his idea, I mean, supposed promises that he was going to be number one for Manchester United. He had a spell at the end of the COVID season where, I, where he got in for De Gea and I don't think he impressed at all, actually. Then he expected more minutes last year. He was going to start last season, supposedly. He had a COVID issue. Fair enough, that's unlucky. Then he didn't get the minutes. But he, he kind of left United with, I was promised certain things. And actually, I, I don't see there's a lot there. The FPL points will tell you differently because he's saved a few penalties this season. But I, I don't think he's that top level. Nico Williams dropped. Yeah, it was funny on Twitter last night because that was all anybody was talking about was, will I get my Nico Williams one point? He had a flare up with Jacob Ramsey. Uh, I think he escaped booking, but it was all it was all anybody seemed to have interest in on on Twitter last night. FPL Twitter was Nico Williams and his and his one pointer. Did you still capture him in Sky? Yeah, I did the same. I've not even looked. <laughs> <laughs> it was a case check. of uh, avoid. Like I don't care. As uh, as I said to a few people, I said skippable game. His, his one pointer will probably be better than what he's been getting in in recent weeks. Actually, it, it is. So, um, yeah, an important point for Forest. I think off the back of the new contract, kind of stops the rot. They go to Wolves this weekend. I mean, that feels huge. I thought Gibbs White played quite well. Interesting, your man Jalings didn't even get on. Mm. Um, they look like at the moment, for at least they've they've moved to a back four. We saw the team; we didn't know where Kiate was going to play, but he did play in midfield. It was a back four; it was more of a four-three-three. Three. Um, I think they're weak, but they do have depth. But they look adrift of everybody else at the moment, and that's where the anger for Villa continues to come into it. I think because Villa fans be looking at that game. Got to be winning the game as it goes on now. They were, they, Forest were there to be beat at the end of the game last night and Villa never looked like they were capable of doing it. Well, that's the end of game week 10 though. Um, and onwards we go. Just on Nico Williams, because um, I don't think there's too many of you will have Villa assets. Um, there will be some of you certainly that still have Nico Williams. You may have a couple of other bits, but just on Nico Williams, obviously Serge Aurea started last night. And got booked. Inevitably. When he came off, the funniest thing, so he had this massive bandage around, you couldn't see it, it was underneath his shorts on like his quad and his hamstring. 
And as he gets subbed, he unravels it like bit by bit as he's walking off the pitch. And he's dressed like a mummy underneath his <laughs> shorts. But Aurier, obviously Forrest go to Wolves Saturday, they go to Brighton on Tuesday. Now, those who've got Williams are probably, I want him to play at Brighton in game week 12 during the blank, right? Well, if Aurier starts at Wolves, I don't think Aurier will start at Brighton. I don't think he's got the fitness in him okay. to do it. So just... Hold him for a bit. Breathe at a minute. That said, I wouldn't expect anything in returns. I'd arguably, if I was a Williams owner, <laughs> I'd arguably want to start him at Wolves and, and there's greater, ex- because of Wolves attacking problems, expectancy of something this weekend. But yeah, if he doesn't start, don't panic. It, that one point might be useful in game week 12. Cool, cool. Uh, there you go, listeners. Hope you enjoyed this episode of Planet FPL. We'll be back at you tomorrow with Planet Sky FF where we're going a bit deeper into the £50,000 chase. Um, we'll be back at you then. Stay safe. Ciao for now. Thanks, everyone. Be nice to each other. Cue music, please, man, child. <laughs>